Hey guys, Helping Hands bringing you another Dwarf Hunt video. This time we'll be looking at the Warrior class. And I'll also have the developers alongside me uh, help me answer questions I might have and just generally helping out. And I'll be asking them mechanic questions as well. In the first part of this video, we look at the two things that you can choose from. And you've got 90 seconds to choose either one before the game starts. You've got Raven Stone Hand. So he's just uh, quite a tanky hero. And we've got Frida Engelhart. Um, so the difference between the two is one bloodthirsty gain, 20% attack speed on kills, private blend, units hit by angle hearts get slowed. Okay, uh, what would you prefer? So Raven is a much more defensive unit. He has uh, a kind of like buff that allowed him to uh, create armor for the units he has with him. So he's a very good uh, kind of uh, offensive and defensive tank. And you can take out quite big uh, camps with him pretty early on. While Frida, you have kind of like a, a shotgun, which allows her to deal a lot of damage on multiple enemies. So she's very good for both harassment and uh, to taking down large enemies if they're not very tanky. Okay, so here's our hero unit. We'll immediately go and attack an enemy camp with him to get some resources. So we can we can make mercenary straight away if we want to, but we're going to let our team use the resources to make. Uh, oh, this is a high level enemy base. We don't want to attack them first. We want to try and find the easy mobs first to try and hit. So here's his buffs: armor aura. This presence of the stone hand gives nearby units more defense. That you can control uh, space and that jumps you directly to the ping. Ah, control space. Ah, that's very cool. Thanks for letting me know that. So control left, control right click. I think. No wait. Yeah, sorry, control right click is attack move. You know, so every time I kill them, I'm gaining 10 gold and I think 10 food. Who's attacking me? Am I already pushing hard? Let's get myself a unit out to defend. Because he's chasing me, but we're going to kite back to my base right now so I can gain the, the benefit of the town hall's archery. Their arrows coming in to defend. Also, I'm going to fight near the Brewmaster as well so I can get the heal in. There you go, so it's giving us the extra bonus. Some healing as well while fighting this guy. There we go. That's their hero down. And now we're going to take our guys and go over to this side. And get this rune to get the buff that we need. It's like the 10% more damage buff. I noticed that this uh, you got a different music track for this map, which is cool. Yeah, it's actually... Uh... <laughs> our uh, C COO uh, who makes all the music. Ah. So guys, you can see my units are capturing a rune. Now there are lots of runes scattered both in the underworld and in the overworld. This rune, there's four of these runes on each map and this rune, it gives your units 10% more damage currently in the game. There's also a bigger rune in the center of the overworld which gives you, I believe, 25% more uh, siege damage. Now it's very important to hold these um, positions as you, as you can imagine as it obviously gives you a big fighting advantage. Um, notice that when you're capping a rune that there's a bar that goes up and goes down depending if you're in the circle or not of, of the rune to, to capture it. You, when, it. When that blue bar fills all the way up that means you've captured the point and you've also gained a big vision bonus from in that area around that rune which is awesome as well. So there we go, we're going to get that. There you go, 10 percent more damage. I'm gonna come over and kill these mobs. Want to attack with the hero unit because he's more tankier. So we're going to circle him in again. Control attack move. There you go. Hit them down. And we're going to run back to base now. So we're not strong enough right now to try and tango with these guys here. I might just tell my units to shift move this way away from that big horrible mob there that's going to kill us. So we just shift move them away to make them go in a safer path. Go back to our base and then go to the research and try and upgrade our level on our hero. So guys, to upgrade your hero, you need the resource qua. You click on your town hall and then click on the research button. And then where it says uh, your hero icon, you click on that. First level is 100 and it increases progressively as you level up. Uh, it costs more and more qua. Now qua is earned through everything in the game from mining, from killing enemies, from resource gathering, all things like that. Uh, that's how you um, get your qua, and that's again that resource is shared amongst everybody in the team. So as the warrior class, I'm not micro anything else. I don't micro the the builders, the miners. We go to the underworld. We can see that our ally down here is building this little mine thing down here. 
He's made a very compact mine here. Uh, he's built ourselves a barracks now, which is good. So what we have here is the barracks, which is built by the builder. Now, you can build three units in the standard barracks. Uh, that is the mercenary, which you can also build from the town hall, like so. You can also build two other units, which is the arbalist, a basic offensive unit. The arbalist holds a crossbow, allowing them to deal range damage and move it quite fast. And also the shield bearer, my favorite unit at the moment, which is a basic offensive unit as well. The shield bearer is an armored unit, able to take more damage than most other units, so kind of tanky, tanky units. So we've built them over here. So here we go. Here are all three. So here's the mercenary, the boss. shield bearer, yeah. and the arbalist. So you can see the hate, the, the stats down here at the bottom. So he's got 225 health. Present. This guy's got 350. Ready this guy's go. got 180. So this guy has a little bit. So this guy's the, the the best one out of them all with the health. 42 damage there. A little bit less damage on that guy. Uh, and this guy does 44.8, which is quite good actually. He does the highest amount of damage. So we'll just do some damage now with these units, and we'll start with the Arbalest. Right through the heart. It was two shots, these guys, actually. It was quite effective. One, two, three, four. There you go. So actually, a good strategy, chat, guys, might be to get, like, one unit like the Mercenary just to kite them away and have the um, a couple of Arbalists just shooting them at range. And that way, you don't take any damage, and the Arbalists do all the damage while, the, the you know, your, uh, your Mercenary kites them, for instance. That way, you don't take any damage, and that allows you to be better in a fight. However, you have the AO House here, which will heal you anyway, as you can see here. And once your units are full of HP, their health bars will disappear, which will signify that they have got full HP. And they've still got that HP aura, right, because of that, that healing symbol. So you want to keep your units around the AO House if possible. And so these are your three basic fighting units. And they cost this. Mercenary is 20 gold and 50 food. Cheapest unit. Then you have the Arbalist, which is 60 food. 40 iron, 40 gold, and 10 wood. Shield bearer costs 60 iron, 40 gold, and 80 food. No wood requirement for him. Okay? But you do need lots of iron for those guys. You can notice the mercenary doesn't, doesn't require any iron or wood. So you can get him out straight away. But you kind of need, need the iron production. Um, so you need to be relying on your miner in the underworld. Like so. Over here, producing iron ingots going into the base before you can start thinking of making those units. But it shouldn't take too long to do that. Furthermore, guys, there's some upgrades you can do to your barracks or your units. Um, so here we go. The first one is barb tips. Each shot from the arbalist deals 20% more damage, costing 100 iron, 20 silver, I believe that is, and 50 wood. Then you've got that cost extra. The mercenary, your basic unit, deals 25% more damage with each hit. That's 200 gold there. And then you've got reinforced shields. The shield builder has 25% more health, 150 iron, 20 silver, making them more tanky. Then you have the shield breaker, gives mercenaries 80% more armor penetration. 150 uh, iron, 80 gold, and 50 silver. So that'll make them better against these shield boys, the shield bearers, for instance. So you can see their armor is 20 here. Armor is 6 on those. Arbalist has six armor as well, so both quite weak armor there. They won't get to me. So right now, their armor penetration is quite standard. The shield bearer is 0.25, but let's just click on the mercenary. So he's got 0.1. Let's upgrade now that armor penetration by 80%, and, you'll, and that should seriously increase that armor penetration value down there, which makes them a lot more effective against these boys here, the shield bearers. And now we have the upgrade, we click on him, and you can see he's gone up to 0.6, from 0.1 to 0.6. So that makes him a lot more effective now against these guys over here. Okay, we'll upgrade the shield bearer's health now. So the shield bearer health, 350. So there you go, the health has gone up to 437.5, making them more tanky. We'll then upgrade the barb tips from the arbalist. Attack power there is 44.8. And they go from 44.8 to 53.76. So over here we've got our hero actually building up the blacksmith. Which allows us to upgrade our troops further if we wanted to do so. But, th but all this stuff requires, um, I believe, steel. And uh, we don't have any of that just yet. So we have to wait for the miner to be uh, working on that in the underworld. So you can see we're about to upgrade now the mercenary 24-7 more damage with each hit. So 35 attack power, so that should go up. There you go, so 43.75, so it makes them more effective. And you can see the buffs that your units have, guys, by um, looking at right below all their stats here. You can see the ones that they have here. So they've got Opportunist, Mercenary deals more damage, 
and, and the more armor penetration. Same thing with this guy and the shield breakers here as well. Just wanted to show you one thing about the hero unit Raven Stone Guard. He can actually activate an ability over here called Bulk Up. So right now, if we bulk him up, his shields go to um, blue, which means he's a lot slower moving around, but he's a lot more resistant to damage, as you can see here. Allows Stoneheart to prepare himself for attacks, decreasing his movement speed, but increasing his armor tremendously. And, and you can pop that on and off on the fly whenever you want to, okay? So you want to pop that on when you're in a fight, and then take it off when you want to move and get away from, from, from an area real quick. A couple of other things that the, your hero unit can do. You can also build um, tents as this character, as uh, Raven Stonehand. And basically, this is actually pretty much the same thing as a house, and it just increases your unit cap. So once this is built, you'll see that this will go up to, I believe, 46 population cap. So pay attention to up here. Uh, there you go, so it's gone up from 43 to 46. So Raven Stonehand guys can also build some basic defenses like gates, and it's hard to rotate them, and walls. And also you can, you can build wooden towers as well to, to help build up, you know, increase the defense and stuff as well. You could also use this offensively perhaps and m maybe build outside the base enemy towers to stop them from pushing out and keep them caged in, which kind of is, is kind of cool. However, bear in mind guys, it's only wooden structures, defensive structures they can build, not stone like the builder can, okay? Also, the Ravenstone has the ability to build a warehouse as well as a rock crusher and a rail down in the underworld if he wants to do so. So guys, as a warrior, what you want to be doing is not only obviously killing obviously off the enemy, is you want to be dominating the mob spawns places on the map, the little skull icons as you can see on the mini map over here. So right now you've got you've got the, the, the basic one which is these little troll area. Um, you've got a, where they spawn form little green ones, that's the easiest one to kill. And then you have another one which is over here. These guys over here, the purple ones, are a bit stronger, so you want a big, bigger force there. But the idea is what you want to do is just have a few units camped in the area at all times just to kill them off. And that way, you'll constantly be getting more food and gold into your arm, uh, into your whole economy. Uh, and um, you'll kill them as soon as they spawn in. I mean, if you're if you're good with your timings, you obviously don't need your unit to keep your units here all the time. But if you've got a big population cap and you you know you don't need all your units fighting in the main front, you can always have a couple units to the side, just um, protecting uh, and killing off these um, these enemy tr trolls and constantly getting yourself a, a further source of income. Okay. So how much resources does it take to rebuild your hero unit? Uh, when your thing dies, it doesn't uh, impose any. Let's see disadvantages at this moment. So we oh, really? Okay. Units die, you, the only thing you lose is time. Oh, I'm trying to take out one of these things here. I want to just try and pull one of these mobs rather than two. So to pull one of them, I'm just going to get close enough just to get the one to come out and attack. Yeah, like that. And then attack. And that makes it easy. We only have to do one at a time here rather than two. Seems like the, the units in the game, um, like... You can't really kite that well in this game at the moment, which is kind of a shame. Um, it seems if you, even if you pull away from an engagement, if the unit already initiates the the attack, you'll always receive that damage. Is that something that you're looking at changing, or...? It's, it's something we're looking into. Uh, Reina, no, um, Frida is a much better kiter since she is ranged currently. Got me then. Wise choice. Mm. So and... the, the other one, uh, since she is uh, ranged... Uh, also slows them, so there's a chance to be uh, to to do better kiting with uh, with that uh, warrior thing. Yeah, and you are able to cause disengage, like you are able to disengage your attack if time. Uh, but it's uh, we're kind of like making it more visible as well. Okay, let's grab a couple more of these guys. I'm loving these shield bearers because they're just really strong. Actually, I'll rally them to the center here at the moment. Keep you on the point and grab the. Um, Put you on defensive stance so you don't move. That doesn't seem to keep him still. Hold position. There you go. Pull back. Hold position. Now attack him. Okay, so he's in the point. He's actually denying the cap. No, he's dead. That should be going up. There we go. It's going up now, the cap. And also, when I'm having this fight right here, um, I can't see, it's very hard to see some of my unit health bars while they're fighting that. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a clearer way to demonstrate, like if I, I would like to be able to select and drag my units and then have their health bars all appear maybe at the bottom or something like that so I can see the health of all my units together. Definitely something, we are, we are actually trying to improve a bit on the health bars. It's, uh, it's good to see that. 
that is the correct feedback, the correct thing to focus on. Yeah, so when it all clumps up, it's very hard to see who's a lot, who's who's needing to be pulled back and who isn't. Especially when, like, if you if you were to, to get them all to rally to one point, they all merge together as one big blob. I, I, at one point, I, I mean, it's not a bad idea because then that kind of hides your numbers, which is kind of a cool strategic thing. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I don't know, you know, I can't individually select it, a, a guy, which is quite hard. So, guys, as the warrior, you've actually got two upgrades you can do in the university once the builder has built that for you. And that is the field medic, increase healing taken by all warrior units by 20%, and the troll anatomy. Uh, trolls drop 30% more resources, which is very good. And that costs 300 gold, 70 silver, and 150 food there. And the other one was 60 uh, silver. And also 200 Willow Shade. Now, Willow Shade is this resource here. And you have to wait for the builder to unlock that resource at the granary. Another upgrade, you guys, you can do for your warrior units is at the town hall. Which is this ability here called Sprinter. Warrior units use 15% faster. That costs 150 gold, 15 silver, and 50 food. That's definitely very handy um, to get. So guys, as the game progresses, you're going to want to need brewers to follow your army around. And here we have these guys right here, the brewmaster. Now, ideally you want two of them because one can't heal themselves. So you need the second one to heal the other brewmaster if they get hurt. So the idea is the builder gets two of their brewmasters and then has them follow around your army. And then you've got kind of a permanent healing going on, which is great. Um, and it also stacks, so you can heal twice, you know, a little bit faster. But the more and more Brewer Masters you have on, the less it stacks, the less, the, less the um, you know, the effect is. So this is just a generally good, I think. So, you, you know, you have your army like this and the Brewers follow you around and, and heal you up. You want to make sure to keep them, keep them alive, because if, you leave, if those die, you lose the healing, okay? Right, so let's get on to the next thing, which is the Pit. Now, the Pit is your elite um, building, and you can get three awesome units here for the Warrior. Here are the first two. It's the Berserker and the Skirmisher. Now, the Berserker costs 50 gold, 30 steel, and 100 food. Advanced offensive unit. The Berserker is able to deal massive damage due to their quick attacks. They're tough, but not but don't have any armor. So you can see they have zero armor, so they're going to be very vulnerable and die quite easy. So they're kind of like a glass cannon. They do very do a lot of damage. So you can see 84 damage. We compare that to like a shield guy over here. 42, right? And that shield guy's already got some upgrades on him. Whereas this guy hasn't got a, an upgrade for um for his damage. So it's 84 uh, damage. Almost double the damage there. There yeah, is double, uh, double the damage. Yeah, double the damage a standard shield bearer does. Okay. Next you have the skirmisher. Now the skirmisher is a ranged unit. Let's have a look at this bad boy over here. Advanced offensive unit. The skirmisher is a quick ranged unit. Wielding a hefty shotgun can be upgraded to deal damage in a cone or siege damage. So you go to research here. And that's going to be at the blacksmith, I believe. So we go over towards the blacksmith building. And you've got an ability here. The cone attack. So that's a, uh, an AoE attack. Or you want to do explosive shot, which is good against you know, taking down buildings, for instance. But those cost a lot of resources. And as you can see here, this costs 50 lockstone, which is a high-end game resource and it takes a while to uh, procure so um, you won't see this until very late okay and uh, you can see here this is the skirmisher 450 health let's compare him to a an arbalist okay so here we have our um an arbalist so he does 53 damage skirmisher does 56 quite close in terms of the damage but let's look at his attack speed here uh attack speed 0 0.8 0 0.8 is the same attack speed but um, now this Arbalist has been upgraded with some extra damage. This one doesn't at the moment. Armor is 12, 5, so over double the armor there. And pretty much almost double the hit points as well, yeah. Double the hit points as well there. So a bit more durable. Um, it's got the uh, the more armor and stuff there as well. And also the Arbalist is slightly faster actually on 5 point, almost 6 speed, whereas his is on 5.5. But the general advantage of this guy is that, you know, once you get that upgrade in the base, you could do AOE attacks, which makes them very, very good. Um, and then we're about to call on our next unit, which is an Iron Hand, which is the super expensive unit. This unit here is an advanced face unit. The Iron Hand is the strongest dwarven unit in the game, having massive armor and a massive attack. Though it costs a crap ton of resources here with 240 gold, 100 food, and the most expensive, which is 300 Trolls Bot. Now, Trolls Bot can only be found in the Underworld. It's a red um, type of resource, and it's not very common in the underworld. Uh, that this is it here. That's some trolls, but there, as you can see, there's only two there. There's a couple more dotted around the map, but there isn't that much of it. 
um, and it gets mined out real quickly uh, into, into the late game. So you want to try make sure you get control of that resource. Okay, so we've just built ourselves on Iron Hand. Yeah. So you can see this guy's 1500 HP, right? Uh, Compared yeah. to a standard yeah. boy over here, he's got 437, or like a shield boy. So it's like three times the amount of HP. Attack power's 280 as well, which is huge. A little bit slower than the most. Standing fast. His attack range, his attack uh, speed is quite slow as well. His armor's fairly decent, um, but right. the thing about him is he's just, you know, so he's he, honestly a god of a unit, super tanky, and uh, does, does a lot of damage, but he's not super fast, so you might be able to kite him if he charges against you. But yeah, watch out for this guy, the Iron Hand. On to the upgrades you can get in the pit. Uh, the one you can get up is the Research Bloodlust, which allows your Berserker units to heal for 50% of the damage they deal, which is very handy to have. Uh, definitely get that if you're planning on going for Berserkers. That's 100 silver and 40 Trolls Bolt. Also, want to just touch on the Blacksmith upgrades as well that you can do for your army. Um, so this is Steel Plates. Increase all Warrior Melee units' health by 30%. So that's 75 Steel, 100 Silver. Steel Chainmail for Range units. So that's the Skirmisher and the Arbalist. Which gives the and that costs 75 steel and 80 silver. And then you've got steel weaponry, increase all warrior units damage by 20%, forge of gold, 100 steel, and 150 silver. Now this would probably be the first one you want to go for because that's every warrior unit, okay? Whereas the other ones only affect like uh, range and then melee. So you want to go for um the uh, this one first, the steel weaponry I would recommend. But that will cost the most, so bear in mind, bear that in mind. Finally, guys, I just want to talk about the last thing in the game, which is the brewery and monastery kind of buff that you can get. So the builder with their brewers, and if they've been doing uh, playing well, they're going to have lots of farms up a lot of this type of resources here. They're going to have the marble and grains, the angel cap, and the willow shade, as well as the flag. And what they do with that is they make brews, and the brews give you give you a buff, uh, a 120 second buff when they activate them. So um, what the, what the brew, the, uh, the builder will do is they'll click on the ale house and then they'll activate any one of these buffs, um, depending on what you have available. Generally, they'll hopefully have everything available so that when you're ready to go and attack, you can ask whichever one you want. And this, and this lasts for 120 seconds. So, for instance, we could have this ability on for, for 200 of this, uh, certain brew. We have that in our storage and increase our unit health by 20% for, for 120 seconds, for two minutes. And that, and that, so that'll last for that long, and then it'll disappear afterwards. So it's a great idea to pop this if you're like, if you're being attacked, you want to just try and keep alive, or if you're attacking the enemy, you want to have that on. So that's why it's very good to have good communication between yourself and your team, especially the builder, so that you guys are ready to pop brews on and give yourself that edge in that in those important battles. So if you want to know how that, you know, when, when the um, aura is working, so we'll activate this brew right now, increase our defense by 200. Activate that and you can see that it'll appear next to our mini map and have a little timer next to it and our health will be increased. So just for example, we'll click on the, we know that the um, the Iron Head had 1,500 health. His health has now gone up to 2,160. So there you go, you, go, you get the idea um, with that. So guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find that enjoyable and insightful. If you want any answers to your questions, um, I'll try my best to answer them if you leave those questions in the comment section. I'll also try and ask the developers and see if they want to pop around and help answer those questions as well. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see more awesome content from me, check out the link here and over here. If you would like to subscribe, click on the button down here. And make sure to click on the notification bell down there so you're notified whenever I post new YouTube content. I stream it every single day at twitch.tv slash helpinghands apart from Mondays. And I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.